Hey, what up y'all? Mr. Cruz here, the hardest worker in the room, back with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to give you guys a rundown on BandLab's new sampler. So I know it's been several weeks that um, BandLab has released their latest update. One of the greatest things about this update is their new sampler. With the sampler, we're going to have the ability to do just a whole lot more. And it's really going to open up a whole different aspect and perspective that we can have on BandLab being an official DAW that has very professional quality and professional capabilities. So for now, I'm going to open up the sampler and I'm going to give you guys a rundown on kind of how it works, some things that I've learned about it, and also how you guys can use samples, because being that this is kind of a new trend a new territory that most of you guys are probably going to be walking into. I want to help you guys navigate that as efficiently as possible. So for starters, our sampler is kind of based off of a pad. So it might have like a little NPC-esque kind of feel. So what we're going to do is we essentially get 16 slots that we get to drop audio samples into. Now this is just on one track. Of course, you can do this on several different tracks. That's kind of what I would prefer. But for this one, we're just going to use this one. Let me drag this in from off screen. So these are my drum kits. So my drum kits have several hundred I don't know. I mean, I, I have at least 100 gigs worth of sounds here. You can get a lot of these online for very cheap, or you can kind of subscribe to something like Splice, which like gives you credits that you can spend every month to get different drum sounds. Um, or you can just download a bunch of them for free. A lot of websites will oftentimes give you like free sample packs, giving you like, you know, a, a small amount of drum samples. But what matters is how good of a quality those samples are. So a lot of these that I got for free are really, really good quality samples that I've used time and time again. So we're going to go with one of my favorites here, my dude Climax. He has a dope drum kit that he gave me, uh, which also has a whole bunch of other drum kits. Let's go to Johnny Giuliano's. And I like to start out with kicks. So we're going to go to kicks and let's listen to some of these kicks. All right, so let's go this one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it onto V. So now when I press V on my keyboard, it'll essentially let me sample what I'm hearing. So in this window right here, we actually see a waveform of the sample that we dropped in. And because obviously this is something that's called a one shot, a one shot sample is just means that it's, it's just a single shot of that sample. That sample was only hit one time and then that's it. So this, somebody hit the kick, that was it, they recorded it, and bam, they threw it in a sample pack. So down here, I'm gonna explain to you what some of these parameters are. So obviously, volume and pan, that's kind of pretty self-explanatory. But this one right here, pitch. So if I pitch this up or down, it, it kind of adjusts the semitones of our sample, which means that it'll actually make it sound high or it'll make it sound low. We can't automate it, which is kind of a bummer, but... So let's check this out. On the side here of these windows, of the, our sample window, we have, uh, I would call it like a truncate. A uh, truncate just means like we can kind of cut some of the stuff off. So for example, actually let me get a different sample sound. All right, so I got this open hi-hat sound that we're gonna hear. All right, so you notice that this part over here at the end, it has like a really long tail. So let's say for example, I didn't want that tail to be there. I could truncate it and then it'll only play this much of that sample. I'm gonna go back to my kick here for a second. All right, so the attack allows you to kind of fade in into whatever sample that you're listening to. So you'll see that a little shadow will appear right in front of this uh, beginning playhead. So as soon as I start turning it, right, it kind of acts like a fade in. So now um, what happens with the kick is that the kick is going to lose a lot of its punchiness because a lot of the punchiness that comes from the kick comes at the very beginning of that sample sound. So now it'll kind of sound smoothed out. A lot of punchiness, no punchiness. And then release, what release does is release determines how much of the sample is gonna play after you have let your finger off of the, the, the pad or the key or whatever. Uh, now you're not really gonna be able to hear it here. Uh, we'll probably be able to hear it with the hi-hat. Um, so let's say I'm gonna turn the release all the way up. So pretty much it's gonna play the whole thing after I've hit it. Now, if I turn the release down, as soon as my finger lets off of that key, it's gonna stop playing. And tone functions like an EQ. So it's either gonna bring up the high frequencies or bring up the low frequencies based on, you know, however you use it. So if I turn it to the right, it brings out a lot of the high frequencies. If I turn it to the left, 
it brings out a lot of the low frequencies. And then here is a really cool thing that I did like. You have three different play modes between gate, one shot, and loop. Gate, what gate will do is pretty much exactly what I had explained with this one right here. As soon as I let off of the key that is hitting or triggering that sample, that sample is gonna stop playing. So pretty much your finger striking the key is gonna function like the gate. And then as long as your finger is on the button, that gate is gonna open, which is gonna allow that sound to play out. As soon as your finger is taken off, that gate is gonna close and that sample is gonna be cut off. One shot means that it will play the entire sample one time after you hit it. So even if you just tap it, it'll still play the entire sample, so. And loop does exactly what you think it's gonna do, uh, it'll loop. Now the only thing about it is that it's only gonna loop for as long as you keep your finger held down on the key that is triggering the sample. So if I click the V, the letter V on my keyboard, and if I keep my finger held down on V, it's gonna continuously play that sample. And then a couple of the features that we have here uh, is we have groups and colors. So group, I mean, color, you can just kind of arrange certain colors. For example, if I wanted, um, you know, my kick, snare, hi-hat to be one color, and then I wanted my percussions to be a different color, my cymbals to be a different color, I can do that. That's also, that's pretty cool. But group, group is something that's super duper useful. And I'm gonna show you guys in my next video all about groups and how they work and how you guys can use them to make your hi-hat sound really, really dope. And then the other thing that we have is we have kits that we can actually save the cool thing about it is that once you save a kit and if you collaborate with somebody else on that same track that person now has access to the kit that you were just creating also if you're somebody who works on multiple devices if you started making this beat on your laptop and then you went over to your desktop um, now on your desktop you can access the same samples that you had been using previously well, that's what I got for you guys. Please stay tuned for my next video where we're gonna take this thing on a test drive and we're gonna make a beat. We're gonna make a drum pattern using the sampler. And I'm gonna show you guys some really cool tricks that'll help you guys to make better beats. That's what I got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Mr. Cruz, out.